ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮಿಣಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿಧರ wishing everyone a happy durga ashtami we are celebrating what we call vasanta navaratri it is the navaratri for the spring season and today we're going to speak about durga the unconquerable one or how she is known as aparajita aparajita literally means nobody can defeat her nobody can conquer and navaratri is a time when we remember goddess in many forms we remember goddess in the form of lakshmi inner wealth virtue peace prosperity prosperity we remember goddess in the form of saraswati devi which is knowledge enlightenment the path of truth but today because it's durga ashtami we're going to focus on durga ma in our culture in our tradition there was always this longing to see in a woman's body somebody who's strong who's fierce who can oppose everybody and anybody because we see so many male examples in our puranas in our itihasas but there's always this longing to see is there a devi that does all of these things and the answer is yes there is a devi that does all of this and much more and in fact in our own ramayana when bhagwan rama goes to battle with ravana in one of the versions of ramayana someone had shared with me this beautiful story that ravana had invoked goddess on his side so he became very very strong so bhagwan rama said now i have to invoke goddess on my side so that i can defeat ravana and so the way to invoke goddess was to have 108 blue lotuses and so bhagwan rama worships goddess and he he somehow gets these lotuses but he finds out that he only has 107 and so he's getting ready to pluck his eye out to be the 108th one because he's the one who has lotus eye and just as when he's about to do that to show his devotion for goddess she appears to him and says don't worry your devotion is supreme and from here on i will be on your side so we see that bhagwan rama invokes goddess durga not only bhagwan rama even arjuna before war what does lord krishna tell arjuna arjuna seeing dhritarashtra's people on the other side there is something you need to do to be able to conquer everybody and arjuna says what he says sing the glories of durga mata so even in mahabharata 
we find that Arjuna also sings the glory of Durga Mata so that he can win the war. So her fame for being undefeated stands in our Itihasas. And today we're also going to see in our Purana. And if time permits, we're going to look at Aparajita Stotra. In our Purana, specifically Markandeya Purana, we have what we call the Devi Mahatya. It's a very beautiful set of verses which extols Devi and talks about her story. And today we're going to see the story of Devi and Shumbha and Nishumbha and the deeper significance in it. So of course, the Devatas and the Asuras were both doing tapas. See, tapas is not something only devatas do. Even asuras, even rakshasas do tapas when they want something. And it so happened that these two powerful brothers, Shumbha and Nishumbha, did a lot of tapasya. A lot of tapasya and they pleased Brahmaji. And so they were granted power. They were granted power of the devatas. So they took over Indra devata, Agni devata, Vayu devata. They took over these devatas hosts and they were wreaking havoc in the world. And so the devatas remembered once that when they were ever in trouble, goddess told them, just invoke me and I will come to you. And so these devatas began to sing her beautiful glories. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Matra Rupena Samstita Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha. They extol the goddess in various ways and forms. And they say, You are the form of mother. You are the form of strength. You are the form of consciousness. You are the form of hunger, of thirst, of everything. You are that form and we invoke you. And as Mother Parvati was walking on her way back after bathing from the Ganga, she heard all of these praises and she asks them, who are you praising? Oh, Devadas, who are you praising? Such, with such wonderful words. And out from her body comes Durgama. From her body comes Durgama and says, they are praising me. They are praising me because they want to vanquish this Shumbha and Nishumbha. And because she comes out of the Kosha of Parvati, she's called Kaushiki. So she comes out and she says, don't worry, I will go and I will take care of Shumbha and Nishumbha. And by the way, this Shumbha and Nishumbha, they weren't ordinary beings. And the Devatas couldn't even fight with them. They, couldn't, they weren't even a match for them. They were just too powerful. Means all of the worlds, everybody was at their call, was at their beck and call because they were just so powerful. So nobody could defeat them. So this Durga Mata in that form, Kaushiki, she nicely, she says, I'll take care of it. And she presents herself as a maiden, maybe younger than 16 or so, but very beautiful, very, very beautiful. And so what happens is she's in this forest and she's alone and she is beautiful. And somehow the news gets to Shumba and Nishumba that there is this beautiful, gorgeous looking baby. And she is more beautiful than anything you've ever seen before, than anyone you've ever seen. And since you, Shumba and Nishumba, you own all of the wealth of all the worlds, you own the greatest army, the greatest houses, the greatest treasures of the world, all of that you own, all of that you have, you have to have the hand of this maiden. She's just too beautiful. And if she is with you, then you will definitely be in the highest stature. And so Shumba and Nishumba were very, very excited. They said, definitely, we want to be with this Devi. And so they send army, they send an army to this Devi to 
take this Devi and bring this Devi back to Shumbha and Vishumbha. And they first send this Dhumra Lochana. This Dhumra Lochana goes, this Dhumra Lochana, this Dhumra Lochana goes to Devi and says, you know, I have come. I have come and I have come from this Shumbha and Nishumbha. And he says that, listen, he wants you to come to him. He wants you to be part of him because he is incredibly powerful. He's incredibly powerful and he wants you to be part of that empire. And she says, you know, I know he's so powerful. I know he's great. I know he's powerful. But the thing is, I took a vow. I took a vow that I can only be with somebody who defeats me in battle. And so, you know, if he doesn't defeat me, then I can't be with him. So this Dhumra Lochan engaged with her in battle. And he was fierce. He wasn't an ordinary demon. And Devi opens her mouth and she just says this word, hum. She says hum and this Dhumra Lochan is in ashes. He is completely vanquished. And so Shumbha and Nishumbha get the news that she has conquered Dhumra Lochan. And so he sends two of his people, Tanda and Munda. He says, you go to Devi, bring the whole army, bring everybody there. You go, but you bring me that Devi. Devi sees this Chanda and Munda and they, she looks at them and they're trying, they're trying their best to defeat her. But from Devi's forehead, what emerges is Kali. Kalima comes out and she comes out in her dark, dark stature with her tongue out, her eyes up. And she takes this Tanda and Munda and she completely defeats them. And in fact, she wears her, she wears their heads as her garland. And so she's called Chamunda because she defeated Tanda and Munda. And so everybody was so upset that how is Devi so strong? How is it that nobody can vanquish her? Nobody can conquer her. So now this Shumba and Nishumba say, now we're going to send somebody else. We're going to send this Rakta Bija. Rakta Bija was a very special kind of Asura. And this is not like one, two Asuras. Huh? They were sending thousands and thousands of Asuras at a time. So let me send this Rakta Bija. And this Rakta Bija, when this Rakta Bija was coming, what happened was out of this Devi emerged various Shaktis. Brahmani, the Shakti of Brahma. Maheshwari, the Shakti of Shiva. Kaumari, Indrani, Vaishnavi, Shakti of Vishnu. So from this one Devi, various Shaktis of various gods, all of them emerged from her to fight this whole entire army. They were all her, but it was a wonderful, diverse form of all Shaktis. And so they were fighting this Rakta Bija. And this Rakta Bija, what was so fascinating about this Rakta Bija is that Every time his drop blood, his blood drops, an asura forms, an asura pops up. So whenever he's wounded and there's drops of blood coming on the floor, more asuras will pop up, more asuras will pop up, and more of them will pop up. So she had all of her shaktis take care of this rakta bija, but he kept popping up. He kept popping up, he kept popping up. And finally, Devi told Kali, open your mouth. Make your mouth so wide, so open, that all the drops of blood of Rakta Beach come only to your mouth. And so Kalima was doing that alone. She kept her mouth wide open and she was taking the drops of blood of Rakta Beach. And so finally, this Rakta Beach, even this Rakta Beach, was eliminated and gone for good. Then Nishumbha is very upset that the, the whole army is gone by this one Devi. Who does she think she is? And he also tries with all his might to fight with her. 
but of course he loses. And his brother finally Shumbha goes to fight with Devi, tries to harm her, tries to defeat her, but he is also defeated. And this Devi stands undefeated and all of the Asuras are completely vanquished. And the Devatas are once again so happy, they rejoice and they chant this Stotram for Devi to show that she is unconquerable. Nobody can vanquish her. Now, this is a very beautiful story in our, you know, in, in our Purana because it symbolizes what are the things that stand against anybody, be it a man, be it a woman. It symbolizes beautiful, the, what strength really means. When we look at Shumbha and Nishumbha, what do they mean? The first one is Shumbha. Shumbha is the one who's, you know, totally the eldest brother, the eldest one, the last one to be vanquished. Shumbha represents our I-ness or our ego. Nishumbha represents our mindness. So there are these two, I-ness and mindness that are always going to come after us, especially that I, that I or that ego is always going to come after us and always going to want us to make ourselves known. You see the Shumbha, he had this way or this feeling that he wants to be the conqueror of all worlds. He wants to be this person who everybody knows. He wants to have all the wealth, all the treasure, all the positions of the Devatas. So this ego is the one that's always trying to expand, expand and expand its glory. And that is Shumbha. And it will try to expand even beyond what it's supposed to have. And this Nishumbha, of course, also is that demon who feels like, because we're so great, then everything should be ours. Why can't I have that? Why can't I have this? Because I already am so great, I'm so powerful, I should have everything. Everything should be mine. This is my house. This is my place. This is my home. So these brothers are nothing but this highness and this mindness that we have in our lives. And this Dhumralochan, this Dhumralochan is a very light kind of negativity. Dhumra Lochan symbolizes, Dhumra Lochan means smoky eyes. And it's, it, it symbolizes that light kind of negativity, that light kind of evil force, which just goes by hum. It just goes by sadhana. It goes by reflection. It goes by just acknowledging that it's wrong. That is what we call our Dhumra Lochan. All of us have that kind of Dhumra Lochan. It's a light kind of negativity. It doesn't need much. Just a very strong like, hum, this is wrong. This is not okay. And it goes. This chanda and munda are all the actions that we try to do knowing or trying to get something that we feel is mine. So this chanda and munda are our actions, our activity, trying to go out in this world, trying to get, get more, get more, get more, expand, expand, because we feel that we should get more, do more. So these also are a symbol or an effect of that ego. Because of that ego, because of that I, I feel like everything has to be mine and therefore I keep acting in this world. That's what this chanda and munda mean. So that skulls, you know, the skulls of chanda and munda put on the head means inactivity, no more activity because the ego now is gone. Then we come to rakta beej. What is this rakta beej? This rakta beej is nothing but our thoughts. Our thoughts are like blood, red. They keep moving. <laughs> huh? They like they, that the, how blood keeps flowing, our thoughts keep moving. 
And this rakta bij is a symbol of our outward going thoughts. Thoughts going everywhere. We think something and then something else pops up. We think something and then something else pops up. We think so many things, so many things, and so many other things pop up. And they keep growing and they keep growing and they keep growing. This is rakta bij. And so what happens? What is the antidote to this rakta bij? The antidote to this rakta bij is Kalima. Her mouth, her tongue, her wide open tongue and her mouth. What does that symbolize? Her tongue symbolizes Brahmakara Vritti. That knowledge that I am pure awareness, I am pure consciousness. That knowledge, that tongue has to grasp or swallow all of those thoughts, all of those bijas, all of those little, little droplets of extroverted thoughts that are going everywhere in all directions and springing up new, new fancies, new, new things to do. That tongue of Kalima is the one who takes those thoughts and swallows it up. It says now is not the time to go outside. Now is the time to go within. And she's fierce about it. She's not like, oh, thought, come, come, come to me. She's like, no, get in here and oh, come to him, come to me. So when we're doing our japa, you can also think of Kalima, the one who's just swallowing up all of those extroverted thoughts and saying, oh, come to me, come to me and be with me. And when those thoughts become more introverted, more introverted, and more introverted, what happens is that seeker is ready to slay Nishumbha, that mindness, that wanting to have something, wanting to possess, wanting to own. There's no more any fancy for the outside world because the one has become so introverted. And finally, the seeker becomes equipped to slay that I-ness or that ego called Shumbha. And when that ego is slain, that is a true victory. That is Aparajita. And that is Durgama. Hmm? So the true victory is really in conquering that ego, conquering that I-ness. When we get there, that is unparalleled. That is a symbolism of our stories. So there are many, many stories of Durga Ma, but that's just one of the stories that tell us who she is really and how she can vanquish so many demons, both physically, actually, and also symbolically. Now, today, for the second part of today's talk, we're going to look at what we call Aparajita Stotra. This Aparajita Stotra, I came across, and it, it, is, it is said it is from one of the Puranas, and it's a very beautiful Stotra. It's a very beautiful Stotra it, because it's towards Durgama. It's towards the one who cannot be defeated, who cannot be vanquished. And how I came across this was two years ago. Yesterday, those who joined us in book light know that the topic yesterday was about Papa, about sin, our low tendencies, our false values. And sometimes we need to introspect to get rid of them. We examine ourselves to see what is it in ourselves that we want to get rid of. And we try our level best after examining ourselves to put forth effort to get rid of it. Now, in my experience, and I think this is two years ago, if I am right, that effort didn't work. <laughs> that effort to get rid of those low tendencies and false values didn't work. And I somehow came across this Aparajita Stotra and I chanted it. And when I chanted it, it was just so forceful, so strong, so like you can do anything in this world, that kind of feeling you get 
from this stotra. And that really helped. So sometimes these practical things like introspection really do help because at least we pay attention to what we need to get rid of. And at other times, it's pure surrender to that divine goddess that really helps. God, goddess, whomever we connect to, that also really helps. So today we're just going to see a portion of it, I, uh, whatever, time, whatever time we have, we will see a portion of it. And it starts by, you know, saying that this Aparajita Stotra is for this Devi who cannot be defeated. And whoever chants this Stotra, they become free from all kinds of things that are troubling them, all kinds of fear, all kinds of doubt, all kinds of misery. They become free from all of that. And there is a, it says those with these mantras, whoever chants it, they will become uplifted, delighted, and become one worthy of worship. This Aparajita Stotram, I'm going to just chant maybe one line and then we will see, and then we'll chant the other lines. Mm -hmm. Somebody just reminded me on chat, we did uh, Bhavani Ashtakam. It's a, another beautiful, beautiful Ashtakam. Maybe in the next uh, series we can do that. But that's another wonderful one to Goddess. Gatis Twam, Gatis Twam, Twameka Bhavani. Very nice. So I'll chant a little bit of this. We'll go through the meaning. And then we'll see. Om Namaste to Abhaye Anaghe Ajite Amite Apare Aparajite Patati Siddhe Vidye Smarati Siddhe Maha Vidye Ekanam She Ume Druve. And we will pause there. It says Namaha Astu. Namaste Astu means I surrender to you. I surrender to you means, and we talked about this in uh, one of our Gita classes also, means I'm not able to do this on my own. I tried, I tried to fix things. I tried to become better. I tried to, to do everything possible, but you know what? It's not working. It's not working. And therefore, namaha te astu, I bow to you because it's only with your grace it will happen. It's only because of you, it will happen. So you please come through me so it can happen. And who are you? Who am I invoking? I am invoking someone who is abhaya, who's fearless. Durgama is fearless because what makes us fearless? What makes one fearless is when one stands by dharma. She's fearless all along. Because in her role as Gali, in her role as Kaushiki, she knows that what she's doing is right. And therefore, she has absolutely no fear. That's her, the strength of her fearlessness. It is Dharma. She is Anaghe, Anagha. Anagha means the, ones who is, the one who is pure. Her strength also lies in her purity. You know, in uh, Ramayan, there is this episode, Agni Pariksha of Sita Devi. In our Bhagavatam, there's this episode of Agni Pariksha of Prahlad, right? Both Sita Devi, both Prahlad, they could enter this fire, this warm, this heated fire and come out completely untainted, untouched, not with nothing. So the one who is strong, the one who is unconquerable is the one who is pure because purity gives strength. Purity makes us strong. You know, whenever you and I do something wrong, we have no strength. When we do something wrong, when we do something incorrect, our whole persona changes. Our body language is like lower. Our eyes are shunned down. Our voice changes. There is no strength in that. 
Absolutely not. But when we are pure, when we are pure in our thoughts and our words and our deeds, there will be full strength emanating from our body. When we are on the path of dharma, when we know we're, what we're doing is right, there will be absolute fearlessness emanating from our body, from our mind. That's Durgama. That's Devi. So not only is she fearless, not only is she pure, but Ajite, Ajita, she is undefeatable. As we saw in the story, nobody can really defeat her. Nobody, because she stands her ground. She's grounded. What is the grounding? What is her grounding? Her grounding is knowledge. She knows that this is a role that she has to play. And all of this is based on the knowledge of the self. She knows that she has to just come here. She has to just play this role. And that's it. So strength comes from grounding. And that's what she is. She is Amita. Amita means unlimited. There's no limit to what she can do. So many people came rushing, rushing to her, rushing to her, but she kept fighting. She kept going on. She kept doing her thing, which means what? Limitation is something that you and I create by our own mind. We actually are the biggest limitations to ourselves. We ourselves say, we cannot do it. We cannot do this thing. We cannot take this on. We cannot go here. We cannot go there. We cannot do that. We set our own limitations. Limitation is very different from discipline. In discipline also, we say we cannot do that. But it's a very different thing. Because a discipline is a limitation that is imposed because of something greater. So for example, in disciplining, if you ask me to take a class at 11 o'clock, I would say I cannot <laughs> because I need to sleep early and wake up early so I can sit and chill with my Bhagavan Bhagavati, right? So when we impose limitations on ourselves due to discipline for the purpose of something greater, that's totally okay. But when we are imposing limitations of ourselves, preventing us from doing something greater, that's not okay. And that's something that comes in our mind. We do it ourselves. We say, I can only do this much. I can only go here. I can only be this much. And when we do that, it's the biggest crime it's the biggest crime because please think we're invoking goddess she's unlimited and she wants to work through us so the best thing to do is just surrender to her and she will make us vast and wide and grand if we keep making ourselves small she will never be able to fully play her role through us. So she is Amita. So there's no limit to her. There's no limit to her. And when she works through us, there's no limit to us. It, it, is, it is fascinating what an all goddess or God can do when we just let them do what they have to do. So Amita. Apara means she's above everything. So even if she is playing her role, she's in distraction, she's like dark, like Kali Mata, she has her tongue sticking out, she has a garland of skulls, she's got all of these things going on. Guess what? She's ever untouched by it. She's got blood, droplets of blood, she's got asuras, she's got rakshasas all over her place. She's in absolute turmoil physically. But if you ask, what her mental state is, she's absolutely untouched. Apara. It doesn't even touch her because she knows it's just a role she has to play. And of course, she is Aparajita. She is unconquerable, which is the theme of this whole speech, of this whole talk. And she is Patati Siddhe Vidhye Smarati Siddhe Mahavidhye. So we will take all of these together. 
She is knowledge. She is that knowledge of the truth. Because without that strength, nobody can gain knowledge. No weak person can gain any knowledge. She is that strength which makes us do our sadhana, do our tapasya, do our regular practices so that we can learn, so that we can gain knowledge. Otherwise, nobody would come to knowledge. And she is also that beautiful memory. What is life? Life is really our memory. It's really what we remember. It's not really what happened. It's not what happened in all of the years that we've lived. It's the pictures, it's the videos, it's the moments that we captured, that we remember. That's really what makes life. So she is that memory of strength. There are many things we can remember about our past. We can remember traumatic experiences. We can remember the tough times which really happened to us. We can remember grudges. We can remember words, terrible words exchanged between people. We can remember all of those things. But she is the memory of strength. She is that memory which shows us how to use our past to come out better in the present. That is Durga Ma. She's not just any odd memory and un unnecessarily carrying burdens and burdens of things. She's a memory of strength. And she is Uma. She is the consort of Lord Shiva. And Shiva and Shakti are one. Without Shiva, Shakti cannot be. And without Shakti, Shiva cannot also play his role. So she is that Uma. Not only that, she is Dhruva. She is that which is ever steady, which is consistent. That's where her strength comes from. There are days, there are moments when we don't want to do what we have to do. Dharma is not easy. It is not an easy thing to get up every day to perform our dharma, to do the things that we're supposed to do, it's not an easy task. But her strength lies in her consistency that no matter what happens, she will get up. She will do her dharma. She will fulfill it. It doesn't matter how crazy the day is, how down people are feeling, whatever's happening, she's dhruva. She will do it. And that is strength. When somebody is regular, when somebody is consistent, when somebody is there where they should be, that is a sign of great strength. In fact, that is a sign of spiritual progress in the seeker's path. We will now go to the next to see what else she is. Arundati Savitri Gayatri Jatavedasi Manastoke Saraswati Dhamini Dhamini Ramani Ramani Dharani Dharani Saudamini Aditi Diti Vinate Gauri Gandhari. She is Savitri. She is that sun. She is that illumination to all of our intellect. We, those of us who have studied Gayatri Mantra, Savitri, Gayatri, that which gives us absolute clarity in the intellect. That is also strength. Strength comes from clarity. When I know what I should do, what I should not do, what direction my life should head in, what should I stay away from, when I have that clarity, that is strength. Because then I have strength to walk. I, have, I am so determined. I am so clear about why I'm doing what I'm doing. When I'm not clear about why I'm doing what I'm doing, then one becomes very confused. One becomes very weak. And one doesn't know which way they're going. So she is this Savitri. She is this Gayatri. She is Jatavedasi. She carries the Vedas with her. 
and she is Saraswati. She carries knowledge with her. Dhamini, she blows everybody like the wind. <laughs> the very nice, powerful thing. Any negative thing that comes, she is the one who blows it all away. She can take it all away in a whiff. In Dhamini, she also causes people to blow things like the wind. She is Ramani. She's the one who enjoys. And Ramani, she also causes everybody to enjoy. Enjoyment is also strength. What do you mean? Who is a strong person? A strong person is actually one who can enjoy life. So many times we are so bogged down, we are so taken down with so many things that we're doing that we don't even enjoy. We miss life. We miss whatever's been handed to us. We miss whatever moments come to us. But the one who is dharmic, who performs all their duties, who does whatever they have to do, that person is a strong person. That person can enjoy the person who's done all their dharma, they can sit back and enjoy. The person who doesn't procrastinate can sit back and enjoy. The person who clears everything up, they can enjoy. It takes a strong person to enjoy. A weak person cannot enjoy because they'll always be stressing out. They'll always be running after this, running after that, going here, going there. There is no strength to them. So, Ramani, Ramani, Ramani. She has the strength to enjoy and she also enables others to enjoy. Then Dharani, Dharani. She's the support of all. It will come here also. She's the mother. She's the support of all beings. She's the pillar of strength. When everything is going wild in that family, in that place, in that situation, she's the one who can support all. And to support all, one needs strength. Whenever there's such tough situations, things that happen, you know, big things that happen that can bog people down, she's the one that stands strong and she becomes the pillar. She's not the one who falls. Therefore, she is Dharani. And Dharani. So Dhamini, she is the illuminator of everything. Aditi, she's beyond duality. But Diti, she's also in the realm of duality. So in her true nature, she is beyond duality, but she is also expressing as duality. And Vinate. She's humble. That's also strength. People who have true strength don't need to show it off. <laughs> People who are insecure need to show off and they need to tell everybody, you know, I did this, you know, I can do that. You know, I'm like this and I'm like that because there's insecurity. They need people to acknowledge their strength. A truly strong person doesn't need anybody to know. They just need themselves to know and that's enough. And so she is strong. But she's very humble. She doesn't need to tell anybody because she knows she's strong. She's the epitome of strength. And Gauri, she's the ray of light. And Gandhari, she's the, that which supports everything. Shabari, Shabari is also the devotee of Bhagavan Rama. Shabari here means simplicity. Strength also comes from simple thinking. Just simplicity, no complications. This is what has to be done, and that's it. Kiratini, she is fame. She is that kind of fame. Again, not that fame that boasts, that yashaha that just comes naturally. Like Hanumanji. Uh, Hanumanji is known for his fame, but not because he boasts and tells everyone that he's so strong. He's Atulita Baladhama. He doesn't tell everybody all of that. His fame comes from people just seeing and looking at him and acknowledging him for who he is without him having to say. And that is also her fame, her glory. 
and matangi she is the embodiment of thought means if we want to think in life what is the best thing we can think about what is the best thing that you and i can think about at any moment in the day every day we think something like 60000 thoughts they say but what is the best thing that you and i can really really think about matangi god goddess truth so she is the embodiment of thought and she is krishna yashoda satyavadini brahmavadini kali kapalini karalini karalanetre bhimanadini vikaralanetre sadyopachayakari mataha sarvayachna varade shubhade arthade sadini apamrityu so very very beautiful words again to describe devi she is krishna she is that which is dark but she is also gauri she is also that which is fair which is bright so this doesn't mean that really dark and really fair it means she is two opposites she can be two different things at the same time as you know one of her names is bhadrakali bhadrakali means the one who's fierce but the one who's fierce for the sake of bhadra for the sake of auspiciousness the one who's strict with us for the sake of auspiciousness the one who's firm with us for our own welfare so it means that she's two opposites in one and satyavadini she speaks the truth she's one who's satya her speech is truth and for people's welfare she's brahmavadi she speaks on the supreme truth and she's kali she takes away all of the darkness which is ignorance and kapalini she wears this garland of skulls on her neck that symbolizes her conquest of ego so all of that ego all of that iness she wears that on her neck and karalini karalanetre she has such eyes that if you are looking you would be afraid of them and bhimanadini she makes a terrible sound she is capable of making such a terrible sound and vikaralanetre her eyes can instill deep sense of fear and sadyo pachayakari she offers truth and mataha she is a mother in sarvayachana varade she gives blessings to everybody shubhade she grants purity arthade she grants meaning to life she makes life meaningful sadini she supports truth and apamrityu she is beyond death and to this kali to this durga what do we pray now as we ask we tell her nashaya nashaya papam hara hara jalagatam stalagatam antarikshagatam mam raksha raksha sarvabhuta sarva vo padra vebhya swaha we tell her nashaya nashaya destroy destroy all of the papa all of these low tendencies all of these false values within me hara hara take away everything jalagatam that was committed in waters stalagatam that's committed in land antarikshagatam committed in the atmosphere mam raksha raksha protect me protect me again sarva bhuta sarva vo padre vebya from everything that's opposing me all these negative tendencies which are too strong for me protect me and i offer myself to you swaha this is part of aparajita stotra and this is how we see goddess durga so she is she is physically strong she's 
actually she has like nine or ten hands and she has tons of weapons you know she's she's fierce she's physically strong she's mentally strong she's mentally strong because her strength is based on dharma on her right actions her strength is based on purity her strength is based on truth she's intellectually strong because she has knowledge of the self she is spiritually strong because she's a tapasvini she didn't just become like this just like that she herself is a tapasvini and therefore she is the epitome of strength that is durga that's how she is completely unconquerable so when there is something in us that we feel we can't get rid of we feel it's too difficult we feel it's too hard invoke the goddess within invoke aparajita that same durga who was invoked by bhagavan rama when he was fighting ravana that same durga who was invoked by arjuna when he was fighting the kauravas that same durga the devatas invoked when they were fighting with shumbha and nishumbha that same durga invoke her for that ultimate strength to be truly aparajita okay so today we stop here now um we will conclude with a bhajan but before we conclude i will just see if there are any questions and give me one moment also so if if you have any questions please type them on chat and if i know the answer i will answer I got so excited with Devi, I forgot to turn on my light. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Yes. Okay. So, I don't see anything. Ah, put the stotram. Thank you. Yes, I will send the stotram. I will send it to Rubini and then she can send it to all of you so you can read it. Yes, yes. You're all asking for this Aparadipa stotram. I just did a portion of it, I didn't do the whole thing because it's quite long. But uh, in your own time, please read it. It's so nice. Okay. There are no further questions. I think we can conclude the bhajan. Yeah. Okay. So, Ashika, let's have the bhajan. Hari Om Shabaniji. Uh, Rubini is going to send the link to the words and meaning. Um, as Shabaniji said, um, about Kali Mata, there are not many people that we know who would self-sacrifice and grow such a long tongue to drink the blood of this ego, this I-ness and mindness, which plagues us. Um, the only person who can come close is our own mothers, our, our earth mothers who have done so much for us. And so we can only imagine what our divine mother would do for us. So that's what this bhajan is about. Na dato na mato na bandhu na data na putro na putri na bretyo na bata na jaya na vidya na bretti ma meva gatis tam gatis tam tami kabavani.
also you know a uh, very beautiful stotra if anybody has the time to uh, chant it's a very nice one to learn gatistvam gatistvam tvameka bhavani so we will conclude today's program you know i thank uh, Rubini 
for organizing this. And I thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to reflect on Goddess Durga. It was very fun to just uh, invoke her deeply in my heart. So um, thank you. And I hope and pray that all of us become aparajita, realize our ultimate strength through her glory, through her presence in our very being. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhagbave Om Shanti 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 Hari Om